Hi, this is Catherine Skinner of the Educopia Institute. This workshop recording and all of its accompanying material is openly and freely available as part of a research project undertaken by Educopia Institute in partnership with Carnegie Mellon University, Colorado State University, Indiana State University, the Morehouse School of Medicine, Oregon State University, Penn State University, Purdue University, the University of Louisville, the University of North Texas, the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, and Virginia Tech University. It has been generously funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This workshop has been designed to provide you with resources and tools to help you know how to create, store, and use metadata to help extend the use of your research outputs. This workshop is one part of a six workshop series on topics related to the preservation and curation of research data and complex digital objects. You can access the workshops and their accompanying briefs at https colon slash slash educopia.org slash research slash etd plus as you see on your screen. So 20 years ago, electronic theses and dissertations where they were even accepted used to be PDFs. But today, increasingly, students report that non-PDF files are just as important or are more important research outputs and evidence than their PDFs are. So as you create your research files, whatever their type may be, whether they're images or sound files, video or data sets, you need to consider what information you need to store along with those files in order to ensure that they are able to be identified and understood in the future. So let's look at the learning objectives that we have for this session. First, I want you to understand what metadata is and how it can impact the future usefulness of your research content. Second, I want to make sure that you learn what types of metadata you can create and then also what metadata is created, whether you know it's created or not, and how you can find it and then check it for correctness. And finally, I want to help you learn how to use a basic spreadsheet to build an inventory of your files for your electronic thesis and dissertation package. So what is metadata ultimately? Metadata is just information that describes and documents your research, your data, your publications, whatever that file is that you've created. Metadata is what gives that file its context. So more simply, it's information that's created and stored alongside content such as a thesis or a dissertation or files that, uh, that you know, are part of that thesis or dissertation, like your data sets, your images, your video, your oral history interviews, what have you. And it's there in order to help users find and understand that content. So metadata documentation supports other systems that manage the content in lots of ways from determining how it can be shared, whether it can be shared publicly or only with select people, um, to the way that people are able to search for it and find it via Google or library catalogs or other search methods and platforms. Some forms of metadata, so for example, a data dictionary or a code book, are considered essential components of research, without which a data set may be impossible to understand at all. The quality of the metadata that you provide is key to ensuring the future accessibility and usability of your work. There are very few hard and fast rules about what constitutes metadata. So choices about what information is important to know are really driven by the needs that people have and the systems they create to manage and find information. Understanding the value and uses of metadata and knowing what you can do to check and improve it will go in a long way towards ensuring that your work is discoverable in the future. So as we'll discuss in a few slides, there are differences in the way that the PDF file of your text-based thesis or dissertation is treated versus the way that other so-called supplementary files might be handled during the submission process. So in this slide, we cover a few of the common metadata fields that you will encounter and that you'll likely need to provide as you complete your thesis or dissertation. So these include things like the title of your work, the author and creator, uh, your advisor, the resource type that you are providing, what the date is, uh, what language it's in, all the way down to things like your degree information and what your rights management looks like. So what copyright are you declaring on the work? and what rights do you want to hold as the author. 
In this slide, we also cover a few of the key pitfalls that you're going to want to avoid in your metadata creation about the PDF file that most departments and really most colleges and universities will treat as your, admission, your official submission file. And if you don't pay attention to these, these pitfalls will re really compromise the discoverability of your work. So some of these pitfalls that you need to avoid it, include things like uh, making sure that your abstract includes a clear description and keywords that are relevant to your work. This is not a throwaway paragraph. It's something that will be used for indexing and for finding your work in the future. Uh, you'll also want to make sure when they ask for keywords that you use keywords that aren't in your title. And this will increase the discoverability of your work. There are already going to be ways that folks can search on the title of your work um, and search for the terms that are included in your title. You want to make sure that you use keywords that go beyond that. And then finally, and one of the most important, uh, most fields have jargon and acronyms uh, in, in high abundance. And so make sure that you're defining any acronyms that you use and repeat those in both letters and in natural language. And then likewise, if you have jargon that you think is going to make it hard for people in other disciplines to find your work who might need to find your work, then make sure that you include keywords that are less jargony uh, in, in order to promote that. So when we think about metadata and ETD research files, one of the things that we automatically think about is your actual submission of your thesis and dissertation. So when you get to the day where you are submitting your thesis or dissertation, you're going to be asked a series of questions, usually by a web form, and your answers are going to be stored as metadata alongside your text-based submission. If you produce a text-only thesis or dissertation, this metadata may ultimately be sufficient for your work. But if you're in the large percentage of students whose research now produces non-text components, so images, audio, video, software, GIS, uh, data sets, et cetera, these components may not be encompassed within that metadata that's collected during the submission process. So in order to make sure that these files are discoverable and usable in the future, you're going to need to actively create metadata and store that information with the files. So we'll be talking more about that process in the next few slides. First, imagine looking at your research files associated with your ETD in 20 years. So even if miraculously they are still intact and able to be viewed on a contemporary device, will you know what they are, what they mean? Will you be able to understand how all of the files fit together? In some areas of study, this really may not be overly problematic. So, for example, if your research files are limited to a PDF of the dissertation text and a few images that are either already embedded within that PDF or provided in bundled supplementary files alongside your PDF, you may not need to worry. But in others, this may be deeply problematic. So imagine a dissertation that focuses on coerced migration patterns, including several data sets, maps, and a set of oral history interviews. Without metadata, a future researcher may see your research files in a repository, but they may not re recognize that you collected data or conducted interviews that directly connect with their own work. So metadata lets you understand the context and content of a file or digital object without ever opening it up. It's not difficult to create, but if it's never created, a file is very, very limited in its future use value. So a file without metadata is like a can with no label. It's ultimately impossible to understand without opening it. So with metadata for supplementary files, how can you create solid metadata that describes your research outputs? One of the easiest ways to do this is to develop a simple spreadsheet-based inventory of these items. And there you can include details such as how many items you have, what they are, who created them, and what kinds of rights or licensing information they're governed by. And you'll want to make sure that you include a description, not just of what they are in terms of content, so for example, a data set about slave voyages, but also in terms of form and format. So for example, a CSV file that you've exported from SPSS. When you submit your dissertation or thesis, make sure that you submit this inventory spreadsheet as one of your supplementary files. So what might that look like? This is a super simple inventory example. My recommendation would be that you have a few more fields, including things about what the file format is uh, and how large it is and things of that nature. 
But if you do nothing else, then make sure that you at least put together an inventory that includes the file name, the description of the file, the creator of the file, and rights information about that file. And here you see CC BY, which is Creative Commons BY, which you can go and look up. Creative Commons is a wonderful way of documenting what your intention as an author is for the use and uh, reuse of your work. Now, you aren't always the one that's going to create your metadata. There is also some metadata that gets auto-generated through software programs. So for example, Microsoft Office, uh, Adobe Photoshop, SPSS, and others do this. And then likewise, there is some that gets created by the devices that you use. So things like scanners or digital cameras or digital uh, video recorders, et cetera. So in programs, for example, that are part of the, meta of the, meta the Microsoft Office suite, excuse me, so things like Word and Excel and PowerPoint, there's an option that's called Properties under the File tab of the main navigation menu. And the Summary tab, if you go into it, allows you to enter the title, the subject, and perhaps most importantly, the author of the document. So be aware when you're working with colleagues or are using borrowed hardware or software, it's easy for these fields to become outdated and inaccurate unless you go in and change them manually. So for example, if I'm using someone else's computer as I start a file, even if I continue using that file on my own computer, or maybe I start it uh, you know, on, a, on a computer that's based on campus um, and is you know, within a lab environment, but then I take it back and I continue working on it, that file more than likely in its auto-generated metadata will have a, a subject and an author and a company that are not me. And so that's a problem. You want to make sure that this actually identifies you as the author, identifies your institution as the company from which it's coming, uh, and really captures that information that you need to have there uh, in order for this file to be understood properly. So if you review the properties of each file that you produce and submit, just by going under usually file and then scroll down to properties in the menu, then this is going to help you make sure that the correct author, the correct title, and other elements are represented within the file itself. So as we close out, I want to share with you a, a brief uh, image of a handout that you can get to by going to that same URL of, that I mentioned earlier, the https colon slash slash educopia.org slash research slash etd plus. And this handout summarizes briefly the things that we've covered in this, uh, this webinar, this, this workshop. Uh, you can also uh, get to other documents there, including this slide presentation with full talking notes, and then also the guidance brief, uh, which gives an elaborated version of the information that I've just provided. And it also gives a really important set of resources that are good jumping off points for you to go deeper. So this brief webinar, brief workshop is not intended to be your first and last uh, stab at understanding metadata. It's really a jumping off point and a crash course in some of the basics. So three main issues that you should be familiar with at this point. Uh, first, metadata provides clear information about who created content, what it is, when and where it was created, and how and why it was developed. Secondly, a file without metadata is like a can without a label. It's impossible to understand unless you open it. And then third, research materials that are developed as part of your thesis and dissertation research that are integral to the understanding of that thesis or dissertation should be submitted with your ETD if possible. And in that submission process, you're likely to find that your institution does not currently collect metadata about these additional files. That hole will eventually be filled, but right now, most institutions do not collect metadata about what they consider supplementary files. So by building an inventory and a spreadsheet that clearly identifies what additional files you're including and what they are, who created them, what rights and licensing information they're governed by, this can provide in your supplementary files in your ETD package a roadmap in essence to let people know how they can use your content and what your content is. So that's all we have for this uh, workshop and I thank you for listening and wish you the best of luck.